In this video, we are going to talk about numpy.random.defaultRNG in Python programming language, and we are going to study a lot of examples and a lot of functions available in numpy.random.defaultRNG. And also, we are going to talk about random seed, which we can pass to default RNG. So please stay tuned. Now, first of all, I should import the numpy package. So I import numpy as np. Then simply type np.random, and it means that from the numpy package, I want to use the random module, or let's say random section of this numpy package. This numpy package has different sections for different things. For example, it has a section called linear algebra. It has something called linear algebra for doing linear algebra stuff. But it has also something called random, which is for doing random stuff. So from the numpy package, from the random section of this numpy package, I want to use something called default RNG, which is a class. And I want to create an object of this class, and I want to call that RNG. And remember that this name is totally arbitrary. You can name it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or whatever name you want. Now suppose that I want to generate random integer numbers between two values in numpy default RNG. So for example, suppose that I want to simulate rolling a dice for three times. So rolling a dice for three times is equivalent to generating three random numbers between one to six. So I simply type RNG, which is this object which we have created. And then I simply type dot integers because I want to generate integer, random integer numbers between two values. And now because I want to generate three random numbers between one to six, I should pass one and seven. And maybe you ask why seven and not six? Because this value is exclusive. So if you want to include six, you should pass seven, not six, because this value is exclusive. Then you simply type size equals to three because you want to generate three random numbers between one to six. And then you store the results in a variable, let's say called x, and if I print the x variable, and if I run a code, you can see here is the result. And if I run a code again, and again, and again, you can see it is possible to get different results. So by saying the word possibility, I mean it is possible to get the same result, because for example, if a new roll of dice, it is possible to get six in the next one, and in the next one, and in the next one, which its probability is very low, but it is possible. So by saying the word possible, I mean it is possible to get different results, and also it is possible to get the same results as this iteration, as this one. And now suppose that I'm a teacher and I want to define a homework for my students. And these are my students. For example, they are called Darren, Muhammad, James, Ali, and etc. And for example, this is a small class and I want to define a homework for this class. And suppose that for doing their homework, they need three random numbers between one to six. So for example, Darren runs the code and he will get something like this. And for example, Muhammad runs the code and he will get something like this. And for example, James runs the code and he will get something like this, and etc. So as you can see, everyone is going to get different results. Why? Because it's a total random process. And as a teacher, for me, it is very hard to check their homework because everyone is starting their, their homework with three different random numbers. And this is not a thing that I want. And also, for example, suppose that Darren runs the code again, and for example, he gets something like this. And again, for example, suppose that Darren himself runs the code again, and you can see he gets different results. I mean, even a person can run the code and get different results in each run. So this is not reproducible, this is not repeatable, this is not consistent, and this is not a thing that we want. We want to make the process more consistent because I, as a teacher, I want to check their homework, and also they want to make the process reproducible so they can reproduce all the results. And in order to handle this process, we can pass an argument called seed to this default RNG. So I simply pass an argument which is called seed. And now if I run the code, you can see I get this, and if I run a code again, and again, and again, then I'm going to get the same results. Why? Because I pass the seed to the default RNG. And remember that when you pass a random seed, this is called random seed, when you pass random seed to default RNG, then you are going to get consistent results. You are going to get these results. As long as you pass seed equals to zero to this default RNG, you are going to get the same results. But remember, for example, if you pass another number, for example, if you pass one, then you are going to get different results. 
But as long as you pass cd equals to one, whenever you run the code, if you run the code for thousand times or infinite times, then you are going to get the same results. Why? Because you've passed the cd equals to one to this default RNG. Now, in order to get a better sense of the random seed, suppose that the random process of generating random number as an algorithm. And for example, suppose that this algorithm has an initial value. So as it is obvious, if you pass the same input, you will get the same output. For example, as long as you pass seed equals to zero, for example, you are going to get the same result. But for example, if you change the seed, the random seed, for example, to 42, then you are going to get different results. But remember, as long as you pass the same input, you are going to get the same output. So for example, as long as I pass 42 and I run the code, you can see as long as I pass a random CD equals to 42 to default RNG, you can see whenever I run the code, I will get the same results. And also remember that typing the seed keyword is not necessary. You can pass just the number. So if I run the code again and again and again, you can see the result is reproducible. Now let's talk about different functions available in default RNG in the NumPy package. Suppose that I want to generate float random number between 0 and 1. Suppose that, for example, I want to generate three random numbers, which they are float and they are between 0 and 1. In order to do so, I simply type RNG, which is this variable, which we have defined here, this object. So then I simply type dot random, and this is a function used for generating float random numbers between zero and one. And then I simply pass size equals to three because I want to generate three random numbers between one to zero. And if I run, and if I print the X variable, and if I run the code, you can see here's the output. If I run the code again and again, you can see I'm going to get the same results because I've passed random seed and the result is going to be reproducible. Now let's talk about how to generate float random numbers between A and B, between two values. So suppose that I want to generate three random numbers, three float random numbers between two and five. In order to do so, I simply type RNG, which is that object, and then I simply use the uniform function, and I should pass the lower bound and the upper bound. For example, I want to generate three random numbers between two and five. So I simply pass two and five, and because I want to generate three random numbers, I should simply pass size equals to three. And if I run, and if I uh, store the result in a variable, let's say called x, and then print the x variable. And now if I run a code, you can see here is the result. And if I run a code again and again and again, because I've passed random cd equals to 42, then I'm going to get the same results. So it is a reproducible. Now let's talk about how to generate a random number from the normal distribution. Suppose that I want to generate three random numbers from this normal distribution, which you can see the mean of this normal distribution is 1000 and the standard deviation is five. So I simply type RNG, which is that object. Then I simply type normal because I want to use the normal distribution and I should pass location, which is the mean of our normal distribution, which is the mu or let's say mean of our normal distribution. And the mean is 1000 in this example. And the scale parameter is the standard deviation, which I should pass five. And because I want to generate three random numbers from this normal distribution, I should pass size equals to three. And then I store the results in a variable, let's say called x, and then I print the x variable. So you can see here is the result. And if I run the code again and again, I, you can see that it is reproducible and I'm going to get the same results in each run. And also a very important note that you can pass to the size argument a tuple. For example, now if I pass three by three, if I pass three by three, it means that I want to create a matrix which is three by three and all of its elements are from normal distribution which its mean is 1000 and its, stand and its standard deviation is five. And also remember that this note is also valid for previous functions. For, so for example, if I pass size equals to three by three for the random function and if I run the code, you can see I will get a three by three matrix which all of its elements are between zero and one and also they are float. And also consider this example, you can see that I'm generating a three by three matrix which all of the elements are between two and five and they are also float. 
So keep in mind that you can pass the size in this way as well. But now let's talk about the shuffle function. So here we have defined a variable, let's say called x, which is a list of numbers. And suppose that I want to shuffle this list. And by saying shuffle, I mean I want to rearrange these numbers in random order. This is the meaning of shuffle. So I simply type RNG, which is this object. And then I simply use the shuffle function. And I should pass x because I want to shuffle x. And in the next line, I print the x variable. So if I run a code, you can see this is the shuffled array. So you can see that we have shuffled x. But if I run the code again and again, you can see because I've passed random seed, I'm going to get the same results. So let's remove random seed. And if I run a code, you can see at this time I get this. And if I run a code again, you can see whenever I run a code, I'm going to get different results because it's a total random process and I haven't passed random seed. But a very important note, the shuffle function doesn't return anything. So because it doesn't return anything, if you store the results of this line in a variable, let's say called y, and here if you print y, you are going to get none. Why? Because this shuffle, this shuffle does all this stuff, quote unquote, in place, and it is not going to return anything. So because it doesn't return anything, because it returns nothing, and you are storing nothing in y. So if you print y, you are going to get none because this function is not going to return anything. But there is another function which is very similar to the shuffle, which is called permutation. So if you, if you use that function, which is called permutation, there is a difference between permutation and shuffle. And one of those differences is the permutation returns something. So the permutation returns the output and you are storing that output in a variable, let's say called y. And now if I print the y variable, you can see I get this result, and if I run the code again and again, and this time it is possible to get different results. So one of the difference between permutation and shuffle is, shuffle doesn't return anything, but permutation returns the output, and you can put that output in a variable, and now you can print that variable. So this is one difference between permutation and shuffle. And the other difference is if you pass a number to permutation, for example, if you pass five, when you pass a number to permutation, it is equivalent to passing range of that number. For example, passing five is equivalent to passing range of five. And as you know, range of five means one, zero, one, two, three, four. So that's it. So when you pass a number to the permutation function, it is equivalent to passing the range of that number. So if I run a code, you can see I get these results, which is the shuffled format, which is the permutation format of, this, of these numbers. So if I run the code again and again, you can see it is possible to get different results. So when you pass a number, it is equivalent to passing the range of that number. Now let's talk about the choice function in default RNG. So suppose that we have a list of numbers, which is called x, which is a list of numbers from one all the way up to four. And I want to choose, let's say one number from this list. In order to do so, that's very simple. I can simply type RNG. And then I want to use a function which is called choice. And then I should pass x because I want to choose one value from x. And then I simply another argument, I, I simply pass another argument, which is size. And because I want to choose one value from that list, I simply pass size equals to one. And then I store the results in a variable, let's say called y. And now if I print the y, so if I run a code, you can see here is the output. And if I run a code again and again, because it's totally random, I'm going to get different results. It is possible to get different results in each one. And now suppose that I want to generate three random numbers from this list. So I want to choose three random numbers from this list. So I simply pass size equals to three. And if I run a code, you can see here is the output. But as you can see, there are some repetitions in the output. And this is called sampling with replacement. So what do I mean by sampling with replacement? It means it is possible to get repeated values. But if you don't want to get repeated values, you should pass another argument which is called replace and you should pass false. And replace equals to false means sampling without replacement. So if you pass replace equals to false, then you are not going to get repetitions. So if I run a code, you can see here are three values chosen from X without any repetitions. Now I really suggest you to watch this video which is on the screen now.